Hey guys, this video is going to be about using the newest language and kind of the buzz out there called GraphQL with Ruby on Rails. Uh, consider this a part one, so there'll be a second. This one's focused on the backend side that essentially integrates GraphQL with Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails is a CRUD based framework, so that's create, read, update, and destroy. And while that concept rings true in um, the routing, the idea is there is a single endpoint instead of like a post endpoint or a put endpoint or edit endpoint or update, I should say, in typical Rails apps. So this one's going to focus on having that singular endpoint. And the terminology is a bit different with GraphQL. Uh, so there's things such as mutations and also just querying. Queuing this up and figuring it out is a bit different than normal, so we won't actually even use any kind of controller logic in this. It'll be more or less a new folder that gets added to the Rails app that's called GraphQL. Inside that, there'll be a types folder, and the types kind of correlate with the models. So when, with a GraphQL type, there's a model under the hood that you kind of define as a type and go forth and kind of manipulate data as you need it. Um, so there's some high level concepts here that you might not be used to if you followed along with my stuff before. This is new to me too, so I'll have to kind of flesh out some things on my own. I might hit some errors, but we'll do it together. So I just want to run the initial app, get it set up. The initial idea is that it's a blog. So we'll have a user model and a post model. And then within that, we'll kind of use GraphQL to expand on the data side of it. So we can query just like here, uh, using GraphQL to get the data we want back rather than using a typical uh, controller logic maybe in a Rails app. So basically there's no visual in this app so far. So that's, like I said, there's going to be probably a second part that, to this that's going to be the um, visual side of it. We'll probably use something like React Hollow Framework kind of do the GraphQL querying and stuff um, just so it's easy to, to for you guys to understand because I think um, trying to invent that yourself is you're going to run into some issues right now because GraphQL is still a little bit new to the game, but we can get into that in that part. So what I want to do first is just essentially quit this server and start a new app. And I'll just kind of do a new in my directory here. We'll do a Rails new. And I'll clear this out. Rails new, call it GraphQL. Fun demo. And we're going to use API only mode for Rails. So we won't actually have any view layer with this. And that's kind of the, the whole concept of this. I've been asked before to do an API version of this and just kind of use something else to hydrate the views. And so that's going to be how this works right now. So with the API model, we'll actually want to just skip tests too to kind of save some bandwidth there. We don't really need to test at this point. It's more of a demo. So that's something you could add later if you want. So I'll run this app. It's going to be API driven. And there's a few things we'll need to do to set this up and make sure it works with our app. Um, I've run in this to I've run in this before where uh, it's going to use Rails six, but the API version uses Rails five something. Uh, so we might need to do some tune ups to fix that up right now. So we'll see what happens when the app is booted. I'll go and actually CD into um, what did I call it now? Do, do, do. This one here, I'll copy this title, CD, that, and then I'll open this in my code editor. And let's double check our gem file. We're in Ruby 265, Rails 6, so maybe it is going to work for us. Uh, previous version I built this on was on Rails 5 something. I, I think it was maybe a fluke, but we'll see. Um, so with that in mind, we can start to generate the initial models we'll use. So we're going to make use of Rails as we would. Uh, but the key thing is to remember we're going to need uh, some GraphQL logic under the hood. But we'll get to that when we get the models set up. So we get the actual data layer set up now. So let's do that real quick. I'll do a generation, Rails generate. And I'll probably bump this up for you. Model user email it's going to be a string name string uh, this won't have any authentication we won't use device or anything like this this is basic just uh, here's a user model with two things on it uh, so that's something you could add later but i'm trying to be very simple here so it makes more sense so i'll generate that let's hope it works there we go okay uh, 
And then we'll do one more rails generate model post. And we'll say user belongs to title string and body text. Okay, great. So I'll just say rails db migrate. All right, so we can check our scheme out at this point and you can see what's going on. Uh, posts, we've got the user ID. Uh, null is false on that one. We could, that's like a new, newer Rails thing to say it's, you know, it can't be false. Um, other than that, we've got the user model and the post model. One thing we need to go ahead and add to the model on the user is has many posts. Our user mod, our post model should say belongs to user since we did that in the generation. So that should be all set up on the data layer. And then uh, we can just double check our gem file. Uh, we're gonna basically go ahead and use the defaults here. Notice without, with the API mode, there's really very little uh, gems being used besides some debugging stuff for development environment. Then in the development environment, uh, when I started this video, we had a, a handy helper GUI that's uh, good for querying GraphQL in the browser. So you can just, it's called graphical. And you can say graphical rails to, to boot it up. We'll also make use of, in fact, I'm gonna put this just in the development environment here. Oops. Jim. Graphical Rails, and then Gem Faker. Uh, we're going to seed some data, and rather than type it all and create a crazy amount of seeding, we can use the Faker Gem to do so, uh, which is super handy. So let's run bundle install to get those installed. You just run bundle as well. It should go ahead and go and install those things. We've got Faker here now, which is good, um, and Graphical Graphical Rails. Great. So while we're at it with Faker, why don't we seed some data? Um, in the DB directory, there is a seeds file. And here's where you can like define some seeds you wanna do. Um, I'm gonna make some loops, just some Ruby based stuff and generate some users. So user.create name, we can get that Faker gem into play here. And you can check out the docs for more stuff to use but there's, there's a ton at your disposal, but this is essentially what I use for this video. Internet. Email. And we'll do, an, within that five times due, we're gonna generate some posts for that user. So we can do, I'll just go ahead and close these out. So we'll have that done. We'll say user.posts.create title will be faker. And then we'll just use the lorem ipsum class. Sentence, like I said, check the docs. This stuff's pretty straightforward. Three, uh, we have that body field too. So we'll say body faker lorem paragraph. And sentence count will be three. Let's check our work here. User equals user create name that name. Email five times due. User post create title faker. Yeah, I think that's good. So at this point, we could try to seed it, and simply doing that is done this way. So we could say Rails DB seed and hope. If nothing outputs and no errors happen, this should go ahead and you know run the actual seed. Uh, we can verify this by going to Rails console and say like user.all, and you'll see some users in there that were generated. Same with posts, posts.all. There we go. So cool. We have data now, that's good. We're gonna need that to query anything, so that was the whole point of that. Um, so with ad adding that, we can go ahead and start the GraphQL installation. So what we'll do there is some generations using the GraphQL gem, and that's gonna look like this. Once you install the gem, you can run this. So GraphQL 
install. Okay, notice how much it creates, which is quite a bit, um, but there is new, a new folder in the app directory called GraphQL, and it's gonna have types directory, and there will be a mutations one that we have as well. And mutations you can think of as just modifying the data in the data base, and then types are a way to sort of query for it or do relations and pr build these queries based on GraphQL with Ruby. Um, and so that's the Ruby port of it, if you can think of that. So uh, we can make sure we go ahead and run bundle and make sure we have all our dependencies there. Um, if you notice on the route, it's gonna create a post to GraphQL and GraphQL ex execute. And that's essentially all you put in your routes file. That's the cool, the beauty of GraphQL, in my opinion, is there's like no concept of adding specific routes for things you need. It kind of just has it under the hood. We're going to modify this coming up to, to do some stuff with that graph, graphical interface. Uh, but for now, that's, that's essentially it in our routes file, which is pretty handy. Uh, so with that installed, now we still need to run the concept of our models as GraphQL objects. So we've already got a user user model and a post model, but we need to create GraphQL objects containing those. And that's another generation that gets added. If you just say Rails generate, you'll see a new GraphQL column with different stuff you can add here. So we'll do the same. We're gonna use this object one in particular now. So we'll say Rails generate, you could say GE2. GraphQL object and user. Cool. And then the same for post. Sweet. So it added, a, as you can see, it's a new type in the GraphQL folder. If we go back up to the app, I'll show you the actual look and feel of that. So we've got a new types folder, a user type and a post type. There's some base types in here that are just ways to kind of build upon uh, certain things you might need within a query. So it gets, it gets in depth. You might want to check out the GraphQL documentation to kind of get more of a background of what these things are and how they work. Uh, there is a schema file in here too, which will basically import all the mutations and queries we build based on the types uh, that are in these folders. So it's just, this is kind of the, the holy grail file, as you can see. So with that installed, we should be set to start uh, building some of the queries, but we need a way to visualize it and probably do it a little more easily. And that's where that second gem comes in that we've added in uh, the beginning. So in the gem file, there's a graphical rails. It's called graphical rails. That's gonna be just a GUI that we can use on the local host to co go ahead and execute the queries uh, in line. So that's where we're gonna go back to the, um, to the routes file and modify that a bit. So we could say if rails environment env dot development and we could say end this is going to be outside of the scope of that but this will be the the graphical one so mount it's going to be its own class graphql rails engine and then we'll say at and then we'll give it the path we want it to. You can, whatever you want here. I'm just gonna use the graphical namespace there and then GraphQL path is the route below. So we'll say GraphQL execute. And modifying this probably deserves a reboot of your server if it's running. I don't even have it running yet, so we'll still need to kind of boot that up. Um, let's see. Let's see if we get any errors. I did run across some errors at this point if we boot up the server. So if I try to go to this route, this is the old app. Let's see if we get, we get a loading at this point. No route matches this. So there is an issue right now that I'm running into or that I ran into that's dealing with the sprockets uh, engine in the application file in, the, in a typical Rails app. So when you run it in API mode, there's this kind of gotcha that we need to sort out in this file here. What I ended up doing is uncommenting this sprockets rail tie and 
on top of that, we need to create a asset pipeline uh, manifest file. So that's going to actually be, this is normally generated by default in a new Rails app. But if you create a new folder in here, call it assets. Inside it, we need a config directory. So config. Inside it, we need a manifest.js file. And we'll need to link two things, which are the CSS for graphical and the, app, the JS for graphical that are gonna link into this tree. So my theory is, I think this is just a, a oversight on actually installing this that wasn't quite in the, the documentation, but I found out from searching, of course, Google is your friend in this case. So once you add this, reboot your server, and hopefully we should be in shape. Yep, okay, cool. So that essentially loads the, the JavaScript and CSS needed for this to render. If we were to go to any other routes in our Rails info routes, we're just gonna see the one, basically that's the GraphQL stuff. And then of course the Rails mailbox stuff that comes with Rails 6, action mailbox, I should say. So all we're gonna be concerned about in this video is this GraphQL UI. But essentially at this point, we should be ready to rock and roll. Now the key thing to think about in the graphical side of things is building that query to come back with the right data. And this is gonna be defined in our user type. So right now this looks like this. And again, this is all stuff in our GraphQL namespace folder here. We're not gonna to touch controllers. There is a controller here that does the execute. Uh, you can check that out. That's more or less just doing that that stuff behind the scenes so we don't even have to worry about it. But there's some there's some nice stuff here to kind of check over and, and see how it all works. You might dig in there. But the one thing I want to focus on right now is the user type. And we need to create type stacks so that GraphQL knows what kind of data to send back. And here I can specify uh, what columns, the methods, and more that will return to the app. So we can actually think of this as like the model there, but in the GraphQL world. So what I wanna end up doing is specifying the fields we're gonna return, and then also some methods uh, that we might want. So like say a, in a blog case, maybe we want the post count of the specific user. So I'll do that. So it's gonna look like this. And here we're actually doing some type checking. So it's kind of nice that uh, we are given this interface to work with. So here we're passing the ID, it has an ID attribute. This is the type coming back and null is false, so it can't be blank. Uh, for name, we'll have that name field, and it's a string type, and null is, we can set it to be true if you want. Field, email, string, null, again, can be true if we want. And notice I'm not doing any comments after these. Um, that was a gotcha on my own that I did. So the, the tricky, part here, I guess, would be returning the posts. So a user's posts, how do we return that? And that looks like this. You could say types, post type. And notice these brackets here indicate that it's an array. So it's gonna return an array of objects in that sense that are the post itself. It took me a little while to figure that out, but it, it does make quite a bit of sense um, if you're just you know, quickly looking at this. And then finally, you can create methods within this um, type and what I'm going to do is create one called posts count. It's going to be an integer. So it basically just returns a number and null will be true here. Class will have a def posts count and you could build way more methods out of this and, you know, return certain things. But uh, the way it works is object dot posts dot size. So object in this case indicates we're able to return in the query a post.count method that returns an integer. And then once we call this, it'll actually do some Ruby just to go ahead and perform that active record kind of querying uh, within a typical Rails app. So we can get the post.size or count, whatever you wanna use here. Count would probably make more sense, but size works as well. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. And we can move on to the post type and do something similar. This one's a little more simpler, but we're gonna pass the field of ID Integer will be that one. 
and null will be false. Oh, see, I did the thing with the comma. We don't need that. Field will be title on this one. String, null, false, and then body, since those are our columns on the database. Cool. So the main query type is within our schema. And like I said, this returns essentially all of the types in this folder. Uh, we get the mutation type and the query type, and that's how that works. Um, inside that, we're gonna go into our query type and define some stuff here. Right now, there's some basic stuff, and this is where essentially you define the queries you're gonna go for. So say, I wanna query for all my users or a specific user or a specific post, et cetera. And in this case, we're just gonna focus on the user concept. So I'm gonna get rid of all these comments and we'll say uh, to get all the users, I'm just gonna add a comment. Typically you do like user.all in Rails and that works, uh, but we actually need to think about how to do it with GraphQL. So let's say field, we're gonna say it's called users and this is gonna set up an array that's gonna return all the users in object form within an array for GraphQL to go ahead and query for. So this sets that up. We still need this concept of users though in this query type. So there's no way to kind of dictate what that would be unless you do something like this. So user all and should be user. So as you can see, it's, it's mixing some Rails stuff you might be familiar with with the new GraphQL logic that returns the data we need in the way that it's gonna hydrate with. So the same is true if we want, say, a user to return. Uh, instead of an array, we're gonna return a singular object and it's gonna be, it's gonna be types and we're gonna use user type and we'll say null, false and do. Within that block, we'll return um, the argument, so you can actually pass in arguments too. And it's going to be the ID that we're going to get. And we'll say required is true on that one. So that, in theory, looks like this in Ruby. You don't need the brackets. And inside that, we'll say user.find ID. So is that hopefully that makes sense. That's kind of a mix of, of GraphQL world with Ruby world. I, I think once I started seeing this stuff, I was like, oh, okay. And then you kind of, tr this gets translated to the same thing here, but this essentially makes it accessible via the main schema of uh, we're passing that query type through. So that way we can actually from that endpoint do what we need to query for the specific users in the database. If we were to go ahead and parse this, you see, there we go. So a qu typical query looks like this. Uh, if you want to just refer to the users, you can actually clean this up and just use without the query name and just use GraphQL. Notice there's no punctuation whatsoever. It's just users with an option, open uh, brackets here, name, email, post count. Post count refers to that method we created before. So that's kind of a handy thing to add. If you ever want to update the query, you totally can just, you know, remove something, press go. And there it goes. So post count, move that back. Very good. And say I want to find a specific user, so we can do the same thing. We can just say user two. I'll say ID two. And we need to open a bracket, close that other bracket, and we could say name of that user, email, posts, and get the title of the user, the posts itself so there we go and that's all the titles coming back if you want to add the body as well we can do that so there we go so that's all relative to this specific user so you can see how cool that is um, we're not doing any kind of like fancy logic it's just once that query is built you can return whatever you want and essentially like if coming up we'll, we'll use this in more of the views but a lot of your querying happens actually in the view layer as opposed to maybe in your controllers, which is kind of nice in a sense, because you could always change it, bring back the data, exactly data that you want, which is, I think, a big sell for GraphQL. You're not returning data and just using certain things. You're just returning the data you need and using it at will. Okay.
So that's querying for data. Uh, there's another concept called mutations in GraphQL that's essentially creating or you know modifying data. And it's a little more uh, involved, but we can go ahead and create a concept to, to you know show the proof of it working here. So inside the mutations folder, I'm going to create a base class uh, simply to kind of keep the clutter uh, out. And it's going to call I'm going to call it base mutation. RB. This is going to be a class called mutations, base mutations. And then we're going to inherit from GraphQL schema. And then one called relay classic mutation. I got this from the docs, so I'm not saying I know exactly what this entails, but the idea is to inherit this specific file into our other mutations coming up. They're going to allow us to do certain things. So some terminology to kind of uh, throw into the, the mix here are there's arguments to a mutation, and these are typically required and because you're creating something or modifying something. So maybe you need an ID or a name attribute or an email, et cetera, to update. Um, so that's kind of where that comes into play. You can think of these as something like the strong parameters in, rail, in a typical Rails controller. We need to kind of whitelist what's coming through. Uh, on top of that, there's the fields. And with these, it's like an accepted argument. So if I want to return a user field, with our new model accompanied with an array of errors, if any exists. So it's kind of one of those things of when I create a new user, I want to return that stuff if there's anything wrong. And then there's a resolve method uh, where we execute acts of record commands. It's going to return a hash with the keys uh, to match the arguments or fields. So I know that's a mouthful. Uh, so let's put it to practice. And we're going to create one called create user. That's in the mutations directory here. So what we'll do is inherit that base mutation. So mutations, base mutation. We got that class to work with now. So that's inheriting this guy. So we don't have to type all this basically in these. That's the whole point. And then we're going to go ahead and add our typical creation of a user. So each each kind of file would be the actual mutation being performed. So here's the argument portion, so argument, and we'll say name. So these will be what you pass in to create the new user. So think of it like that. So to create a new user, we need an email and a name at this point. And then the field itself will be a user. And it's going to be the user object, but also known as a user type in GraphQL. We'll say null, it's false. And the field, we're going to return these two things. So we'll error, and I spelled that wrong, it should be this. Errors, we'll return an array of errors if there are any. So it's going to be string formatted array. Null will be false. And then the resolve method I mentioned looks like so. And it's going to contain the two arguments just like this. So email. Inside that, we'll do the Ruby you might be used to. So user.new, name, name, email, email. And then we could say, just like in the controller layer, we typically do like a, if a user save, do this, and then do that. Uh, we, here we can just say user, user. This is what we're going to return in, in the case of the GraphQL instance. And then empty errors object, since there are no errors. And then we'll say else. I don't like this indentation right there. OK. Else we'll say users null or nil. And errors, we can return uh, thanks to Rails. There's this built in errors logic. 
full messages, and then you can render those messages. So that's essentially what we've got in creating a user. So we build our arguments. They're going to be name and email because that's what we need to create a user. And here is the return portion of the user. So you can build what you're going to return once that new user is created. Once it resolves, we'll return the user itself with no errors. Otherwise, we will return an empty user object and the errors itself. So no user will be created there. So uh, again, we're inheriting from the base mutation class. So that's this file here, which is inheriting from the GraphQL schema. Um, that's what I said I got from the docs. Uh, so essentially, that's the case of building the mutation. Now we need to actually build it onto this mutation type. So that's actually not in our mutations folder, so we'll need to create it. Or excuse me, it's in our types folder. So we'll say mutation type, it's built already. See, there's a to-do here, it's just a test field for modifying that. We'll remove that logic, and since we created that create user mutation, we could say the same thing here. And mutation is mutations create user. So here's, we're naming that field and then we're passing in the mutation itself from the mutations folder. It's, it's just kind of knows to look in there and then find this create user class. Naming conventions matter here. So camel case turns into this uh, snake case and that kind of just follows true down the, the path of creating more mutations later. So in theory, this should work at this point. If we go back to our browser, uh, we can kind of just get rid of this query for now just run play. Of course, there's a server error because nothing's coming back. Just do that. Nothing will show. Uh, a mutation is going to look at this. So you're going to preface it with the mutation. It's going to be an open bracket. And here's where we're going to perform that create user method and pass in the input object. Within that are going to be our arguments we named. So I'll say Andy Leverance. Email is Andy at webcrunch. It's a string. Com. Then outside of that, we need an open bracket to return the user that comes back. So in this case, it'll be me. I'll return the ID of my new user uh, name, email. And then af after this bracket, we can return the errors object within this other uh, object up here. So essentially, we're going to return these two objects. Uh, errors will be an array if there are any, though. So if we go ahead and run this, scheme is not configured for mutations. Looks like I'm missing something here. Syntax error somewhere. Create user. I have a syntax error. So let's go back to create user. I think I have something here that's not quite right. Uh, let's double check. Resolve user equals you new name name email email ah why I put brackets there I'm not sure we don't need them I'll save that down go back to here refresh still got that run that do this again errors schema is not configured for mutation I think that's what's wrong guys so I have class, this should be mutations, I mutation. I also didn't have a comma here. So we've got our query built here. We're creating that user for the mutation, returning an object that has the user and then the errors are if there are any. So here are my uh, users at this point. I don't have any posts, so it wouldn't return anything. Um, so if I say posts, it would just return nothing as far as I'm aware. It needs to return something in that object. So we could say posts. Actually, it's going to be post count, but let's see if this works. Yeah, no, no post. So nothing there, but that returned as we wanted. So that's essentially it, guys. So the concept here is that uh, we have our GraphQL folder. We've got mutations to perform manipulations on the data. We've got our types to query for the data. Notice we're inheriting into our schema. We're using these different types to perform these types of queries on the front end. So we've got query type to do users. We can return all the users. That's what I did in the very beginning. Uh, if you recall, it's going to just say, we could just do an open close and just return users. I believe this should work.
field must have selection of users. We need something about the user. So ID, um, title, or not title, name, email, post count. This should return quite a handful of users with that stuff. So as you can see, it all happens just with one query, no, no uh, crazy routing or controller logic to hook up, which is kind of a, a way to build those queries in the types file here and then just go ahead and manipulate them at will. So that's essentially it. Like I said, I think coming up, I'm gonna do the front end exploration of this and just kind of hydrate data on the views and use something different that I haven't really used before with maybe React or Apollo. Uh, like I'm pretty new to both of those languages. I'm, I haven't been a React person very much in my past, more of a view guy, but we'll see what happens. So like I said, I, I pretty much learn on this channel. So it's a public way to go ahead and learn that stuff. So hopefully you enjoy. Uh, so look for that part to come up soon. If you haven't uh, checked out my other stuff with Rails and stuff like that, there's a ton on this channel. Uh, so I invite you to check it out. As always, thanks for watching. And from now on, peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.